beautiful people you're welcome once more to chef dawi's kitchen it's another edition and this time around we are going to be cooking some rare and delicate cameroonian dish this is actually one of the best cameroonian delicacies you can find out here in from cameroon yeah let me put it that way so what are we doing here today Wow, what's achu? What's achu? Achu is a different one. Wow, well, achu is a traditional meal for some villages found in the northwest. Yes. Some villages. Like Which, Bafu, I, I know you're from the northwest. Yeah. Which village are you from? From Wum. From Wum. Mm -hmm. So achu is oh, not yeah. traditional to. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which. Which is the traditional meal? Fufukon and Kati Kati. So yeah, people, someday we're gonna do you Fufukon and Kati Kati. If you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed, this is your chance to do so. Hit the button staring at your right in the face. Hit it right now. Thank you for doing so. Okay, so um, can you introduce our ingredients? What do we have here? Yeah, we have kanda. Kanda, this is Kanda or cow heights in Nigeria, they call him Pomo. Like that in our Mali song, say Pomo is sweet, 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 sweet. Yeah, this is Pomo. Yeah. And yeah, we have crayfish. Crayfish. I see they don't cook a chew with crayfish. What what would this one be used for? Um, yeah, it'll be used for a goosey pudding. Yeah, because we're gonna make some rare and tasty and spicy egusi pudding to complement our achu with yeah. so we'll be using that um, to make egusi pudding yeah so what do we have so we have the banana for the achu and we have the kukuyam so how what do we do with this we need to boil the kukuyam and the yeah. banana so we we'll mix together our we'll palm and that's yeah, the achu, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, now this is already a blend of achu spices. Yeah, we have a blend of different achu spices that we have put together. Um, so, um, right here we have, this is, we call this country jamanjama berry. We have this right here. You know, um, achu is actually a carbohydrate-based food. So you need to complement it with a lot of veggies. So we have the country German German right there. And we have, what's this? Njakaturu. Njakaturu or garden egg. Yeah, you can call it Njakaturu garden egg. So we, those are our veggies um, together with the paper. We complement everything. And we have some dry fish right here. This is Mokanjo and we have some Bunga. We're gonna mix everything for our Igusi pudding. And we have some, what's this? Cowlet, yeah, we have some cow, cow food, they call it a cow food, or oh, cowlet, I think I'll put in English, okay, good. And we have some red meat right here, very necessary. And like they introduced, we have our kanda. So everything together, everything we have right here. We have, yeah, the limestone is very important. We have the limestone right here. We have some um, salt, we have some seasoning, we have some seasoning right there. And we have the white pepper and we have the black pepper. Now, this is what we are going to do. We've we'll introduced our ingredients. Let's get right to the stage. Thank you, people. Thanks for staying with us. And we hope you watch right to the end. So we got our taro right here, or kokoyam or the achu so that's what we already have in the pot the same thing right here so this one has been boiling for um about 20, 20 minutes um in a pressure pot so it's ready right now we need to take it to the next stage okay <laughs> So right in here we have um, our melon seed, um, locally known as egusi. We have some onion, we have ginger, we have pepper, like um, we have pepper right here. So we're gonna blend everything. This is um, another meal on its own, egusi pudding. So we're gonna do egusi pudding some other day. For now, 
the concentration is on actual. I got my crayfish right there. I always like to have that crayfish, that um, flavor in my igusi pudding. So I'm just gonna add a little, a little bit. I'm not gonna put everything in here. Just a little bit. Yeah, I think yeah, that's enough. I blend everything together with the crayfish. That's um, our tower right there, the actual. We're doing the peeling. And from there, we're moving to the next stage. We're coming right here, right here. So traditionally, like locally, what is normally used, they use a mortar. But you're busy, you're out there. Um, somewhere in the US, somewhere you're busy, you're pretty much busy. You don't have a time to be pounding, right? So you, you can just get this. This is actually a three in one um, machine. So this is actually meant for meat, like when I want to make meatballs. But I just tried to experiment with it and I found out it actually does the job for the pounding of the actual like excellently so this is what we are going to be using today okay. Okay. yeah so we have the taro right here peel taro and it's very hot you ensure it's still very hot right so we're moving to the next stage like putting in the machine and We have the banana boiling in this pot and we have the taro right here. So see you on the next step. Final product, final product. So we move to the next stage. I'm gonna show you the next stage. This one you need a little bit of force, like you need to do this vigorously. Yeah, you want to ensure your cocoa at the end of the day is you have a um, uniform texture and it should be kind of slimy. Yeah, I need to draw. So we'll get our banana right here to mix. We have our we have our banana, right? So we have the banana in here. Gonna mix everything together. Um, mix everything together to make sure we actually get a smooth mixture at the end of the So, okay. um, we got the season right here. First of all, I got um, this is a mix of white paper and black paper. I always like to to put them so retain that flavor. You know. Now I'm gonna put my seasoning. Yeah, I'm gonna put my seasoning. So I'm gonna put a bunch of salt like this. Yeah. Just estimate to make sure it's um, like five grams, five grams of salt. Down. That do. Then one thing you notice about this, I haven't put any water in this. I haven't put any water because I really want my meat and the food color to be tasty and spicy. Yeah. So no water and the the meat the meat once it starts start boiling, it's gonna the heat is gonna cause um, water to come out from the meat and the water from the meat is going to boil the meat. So let's go. Fraser okay. pot. I'm gonna lock up this. Uh, okay. So we're gonna check it in the next 20 minutes. In the next 20 minutes, we're gonna get back to it to check what's in there. Okay, let's go. So that's our cocoa. We need to blend everything and uh, having that unique, slimy. Texture. So that's what we are achieving right now. Yeah. So 
after the machine don't easy the work for we we still get to come back for the traditional way but the work that will be eased up by the machine now this is what we're achieving here we get to the So we are actually done blending our Egusi melon seed. So we transfer that into this bowl. Once more. So we have our Mokanjo fish. Now the normal thing people want to do to boil this fish separately. But um, what I normally do, I put them like that. Men, I yeah, because I'm um, cooking is an art. I'm speaking, I should say. I would like to experiment cooking is an art, and as an art, um, there's no limit to what you can do but your imagination. So, with me in the kitchen, I can actually turn water into wine. Yeah, like I could be stuck not having um, all the necessary things, but I always know how to stay around and improvise. That's what we're doing right here. We are going to bake our egusi. And right now I have my plate that I'm going to use, all lubricated with oil, like vegetable oil. I have some vegetable oil right there. So. We have our small cooking right here. We use a bigger one, like when we are doing um, So I'm just going to put this right here. Okay, so this. The pressure is out. We need to go to open our pressure for right now and see what we have in here. Oh my god, come see these cuties. Come see these little babies. Come see. We didn't put any water in there. Can you see? Can you see that, right? All came out from the meat. All came out from the meat, so you don't. When you're boiling, you don't need to add water. There's excess water in meat that, like, what we consume these days. So for you to stay healthy, while boiling, you ensure you don't add any water to it. So I don't think it's ready. We're gonna leave it for another 15 minutes and concentrate on the other. Take a look at these curious and they're lovely look at this zero water we didn't add any water so give me the pomo give me the candle right now yeah you can take a look at that so this is what we have right here it's ready boy so we just need for them to for that taste to get in them all right so adding our candle right there now give me water this is when i need water at this stage I'm going to add a little bit of water so I get some stock. I get some stock that I'll be using to make my acho soup. So I'm just gonna mix everything together, the kanda, and I'll allow it to cook for a while so that taste can get into the pomo as well. All my need taste now, all my want taste for the actual get to get my stam, get to get my trademark chef that way. Sure. Okay, beautiful people, look at what we got in here. Look at what we got in here. A um, few moments ago, I added my garden egg in the oven. Yeah, I added that. And 
but you will see. Look at, look at this baby. It's coming strongly. The flavor and everything. Look at the baby. It's coming, it's coming. It's coming. Let's go. So we have our vegetable right there. Now, that's the next thing we are going to do. We're going to get some. Just hot enough. It's just hot enough. trying to do we're just trying to break the fibers a little bit we don't want any of the nutrients going out we want everything we want everything so in the next two minutes I'm going to remove the vegetable from this water for one I'm removing the vegetable where is it gonna go to definitely here in this pot Um, we have some freshly sliced onions right here. I just need that flavor, like try it in my red oil. That's palm oil. So I'm just gonna add that right. I don't need the palm oil to bleach. I just need it to just the way it is. So right now, I think um, Montomo, the Tanda, um, is where Susie is um, good to go. I just need to transfer everything onto this tray and take note and make sure I have my stuff. So, I think uh, what we have here is ready. So, I'm just going to turn off the cooker and I pour my veggies in there. You remember, the only heat we had on these veggies um, is actually the, the hot water pour on it. So this we are good to go. The soup. The actual soup, the yellow soup. We have this is um 500 milliliters of water. Just enough like the quantity of soup we want. Then in here we have our stock. You can see that like um the, the leftover from the boiling of the meat and everything. So we're gonna use that. I'm just gonna pour my water. The normal thing you need to always make sure um, the water is is warm, not hot. It's warm, not hot, right? Okay, peeps. Why we wait for that oil to lose up? Yeah, I think we're almost there. Let me show you what my egusi, the baby is look like. All right, my mommy, Nana baby. It's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. That's what it looks like when you bake egusi. All right, all right, we're achieving that. So let's keep going. 20 more minutes to go, all right? Yeah, so that's it. This is this is the process. It's been a long time coming, and this is 
actually the actual spices and right here we have the limestone limestone right so we have the spices i already used part of the spices like in the stuff so i'm just gonna add this one this one is gonna be enough and i'll do a measure of my limestone because this is actually chemistry um, i think we call this in chemistry is, is it saponification like um the process you make soap yeah almost the same but this one we are actually making a soup we're making a soup all right so let's go now i'm just gonna pour this right in there yeah i have that that I want definitely I'll be adding more palm oil so I bleach this okay bleach that and ready to be transferred into this other mixture so transferring the process. So the next thing we need to add our akangwa. They call it akangwa for, for strong country talk. The big book man will call it limestone. So this is our limestone. We add our limestone and we stir to make sure um, the limestone combined with palm oil is going to change the color of the soap make, to make it yellow. It needs to be yellow. And that's what we are trying to achieve right now. And in the village, they'll be, they'll, be, they'll be using force like from one pot to another. But uh, we'll, we'll do it for modern times. We don't need to do all of that. Huh? We'll do it for modern time. So. After I um, we um, put my, my limestone, we done putting my limestone. The next thing I need to do, blend it. I need to blend all of this together. So get me the blender. I need to blend it. So as you can see, we're already achieving uh, a yellow texture, yellow color and the texture. But this is not what we want. We want, we want our soap to become foamy and all yellow. So the blender is going to do just that, right? So we're moving, we're moving to the next phase. The, ne the, the next phase, which is actually the last of this whole process, then we're going to the final phase, which is eating. So, it's been your boy, Davis E. Tabot. If you haven't subscribed, hit that button, hit that button. Okay, so we're about to do the blending. I'll just put a little bit of my soup in there, like that. And I got my lid right here. I'll make sure it's pretty tight, you know. Just make sure it's pretty tight. Then I put it on my blender. Yeah, so this is what we have. Actual soap. You see the magic? You see the science? You've seen the art of it, the art of it, and now you've seen the chemistry, putting everything together, breaking bonds, and forming a unique, uh, this is the beauty of it. This is the point where we say, Chef Dawei. This is the point where we say, Chef 
Dawe. So, um, beautiful people, we are almost at the end of this video, the end of our cooking achoot tutorial. So right now, we're just gonna get our garden egg out from the oven. Our njakato, why we wait for the... Wow, you see this? You see this? Let's see if our egg is ready or not. It's been in the oven for at least an hour. So our prime concern is actually what is inside. What is inside? The surface we already have that creepsy and stuff like on it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of water to allow it to dry for a few seconds like that. Do the same here. This one right here seems to be dry. It's been a long time, it's been a long time coming. So right here. This is our achu soup right here. This is the soup. This is what it looks like. You can see, this is just the way I like for my soup to be. Yeah, the final product. We have a, a mix of kanda, red meat, some bone and food cow and we have our veggies right here this is the vegetable right here and this is our baked egg goosey pudding you can see how delicious how yummy it looks and this is the achu the taro mixed with banana and right here we have some garden egg we didn't boil this we just bake along with the egg goosey pudding so it's kind of delicious okay guys Come on, Chef Dawei is done. Let's have a bite. Let's have a bite. Beautiful people, thank you for staying with us right up to this moment. Do you want to stay and watch us eat? Maybe that's behind the scene, but let's eat. Thank you. Have a nice time. Subscribe and look forward to the next edition. Bye bye. Ciao. Oh, there's a lot of people.